backyard and my channel Plant Heartbeats. Today we're going to be talking about the very lovely tree, fiddle leaf tree. I want to talk to you about my how these trees make my plant love grow, problems I've encountered, and how I've been able to overcome them. And we're even going to repot a fiddle leaf tree today. So hopefully you'll find some tips today that will help you with your own fiddle leaf tree. And if you just love plants, and you want to watch watch i think you're going to enjoy it i always smile when i look at this beautiful fiddle leaf tree i know a lot of us have them and we all want to learn how to do better with them so here's my story today okay so i really wanted to talk about how i got started with my love of plants and it has to do with this beautiful tree the fiddle leaf tree it's a tree that we all see it in a lot of decor magazines and because it's known because of its beautiful big leaves and it's just you know a nice statement plant but it's also known to be a finicky tree so um when i got started with plants basically my first plant was this one right here this fiddle leaf tree that i bought from all these i don't know if you guys heard a lot of people bought fiddle leaf trees from Aldi's. Um, they sometimes come in stock and they came for $12.99. My cousins were all talking about it, that we all had to run and go get one. And I tried to run and go get one, but I they ran out. Because of course, everybody wants to get a tree for $12.99. So I was really, really sad, but I kept on the watch. And one day, unexpectedly at Aldi's, I found one. It was the last one they had. I didn't know much about its care. All I knew is that everybody wanted one of these trees, so I got one. But the story wasn't easy on how to take care of it. Once I got it, um, it actually didn't come very healthy. So um, I started having issues with it. Let's see, let me show you a little bit. A lot of the leaves, when I bought it, already had brown tips on it. And it felt like it kept getting a little more brown tips on it. Um, some leaves did fall off and it kind of got stuck. It didn't do much. Um, no, I was not fertilizing it. I did have it by a window, uh, but it was stuck. It was stuck for months. It wouldn't do much. Um, so I started learning more about plants and started researching and started watching YouTube videos and learning about other people's experiences. That's how my, my plant love started growing. Going into YouTube, researching um, different plant videos, starting with how to care with this plant. So um, things that I learned from my research was, of course, start fertilizing it. So I did. And this is what I've been using for my fiddle leaf trees is fish fertilizer. Um, just because I was a newbie, I didn't want to mess with anything that could burn my plants. I knew that this one um, won't burn. So I felt that this is one that's very easy to use and I would recommend it to anybody. I also like that it's natural. A lot of times when I can, I try to deal with no chemicals just because if I touch it, I just don't wanna feel like it's gonna harm me in any way. So I started doing this, um, the recommended dosage, you can just read it in the bottle, but usually like a little teaspoon and a big pitcher of water is what I was doing and about every twice a twice a every every two weeks approximately i don't keep it in a calendar when i have to fertilize it but i know i should i just try not to do it every week and i don't even water them every week i'll talk to you about watering in just a moment so problems i encountered with this fiddly tree like i said it was stuck it wasn't growing and then when it started pushing new leaves they would fall off um quickly also, as you see here, sometimes they can, the new leaves can come with red little dots or brown dots. Don't panic. I did panic and I know a lot of friends have asked me about it. Like, what does that mean? Is that bad? And no, um, I've, as you see this one, this leaf's already grown a little bit more. The tip, the little um, dark little spots kind of dis disappear. So that's not, doesn't mean your plant's dying or it has a disease. It could it have to do with, I've heard it has to do with the water. So um, since it was dropping leaves and they were staying very small and just dropping it, um, I started, I did, what I did is I pinched this little edge here, like where a little leaf was, where it usually pops out of. I twisted it and I, I 
pulled it off and it actually shooting started shooting new leaves what else did i do i think that's all i did and it started shooting new leaves like from the underside from the top it actually did like it although it was scary at the moment when i did it and then another thing that i did is that i actually moved this oh i actually repotted it also because I was thinking maybe the soil's not good. It did have the nursery soil it came with. So I ended up repotting it. This is the new pot. I, I just did another plastic pot. And um, I was a little afraid that that shock would make it like something bad happened to it or, but it actually didn't. It started pushing out new leaves. And I wanna say from this summer, this whole part here is new. And look, even these leaves are growing bigger and bigger now. So I also changed it um, where I have it. And now I have it in a bedroom in the corner between two windows. And in one window gets morning sunlight and one window gets afternoon sunlight. But it's kind of like in between both windows. So it doesn't really get, a, it gets partial sun. And it's been very, very happy. So I'm so happy. I was, getting, I was ready to kind of throw this plant away because it was looking so ugly and shabby. And I like my plants look pretty. Uh, but I know, I'm learning, you know, they can be perfect. And especially when you see a plant come back and it starts doing good, I mean, you love it even more. So that's this is my Aldi's $12.99 fiddle leaf tree. And it's taught me a lot of things. But one of the things I would say is don't buy one if you already see browning on it. Just try to get a healthier one. You'll be in a better start. I feel like I had to be fighting for this one. And now it's doing good. So then after a couple of months, I decided to, I ran into this fiddle leaf tree from Costa Farms at Lowe's, $17.96. So it was a Bambino fiddle leaf tree, I think that's what it's called. Because it just usually doesn't grow as big. And it is a very pretty plant because you can put it on top of a counter. So I have this one in beside my kitchen sink, beside a window. Um, and it looks so cute. I love it. Every time I turn around and I look at it, I'm in love with it. It's been doing really good. It's been... I want to say it was kind of like this tall and like this has grown in the past few months. Um, it does get burnt leaves if you leave it closer to the light or where the sun hits it directly. Um, it does get afternoon sunlight sometimes. So it's been burning some leaves. So I need to move it away a little bit from the window. It would be best if it just had bright light, but no direct sun, as you can see here. This is the one I'm going to be repotting today, okay? And I'll show you the roots in just a bit. So my other fiddle leaf tree that I bought at Lowe's is this one. Um, I got it for $19.98, 12 bu 20 bucks. And it was just so healthy, so luscious. And it's full of like it's trees. I think I easily like about eight different ones. And I know if I wanted to, I could separate it. Um, gently trying not to disturb the roots too much and I could separate and make different trees. I just don't have space to put all these trees all over my house, so I'm keeping it that way. Um, this one I did repot it already too some months ago and it didn't lose a leaf. It's been very happy. Um, very, very good. Um, been doing the same thing, fish fertilizer. And I do have this one beside a window. It doesn't get the bright sunshine on it, but it's right beside where the sun hits. Uh, and it's been pushing and pushing and I love it. I love it. It makes me so happy. Look at that. Look at that. It keeps pushing everywhere I look. There's a new leaf coming and we're here in November and, and it's still pushing. Look at that. Oh, does that make us happy, plant mamas, plant parents? When you see new leaves, it's been like this for the past few months. So I'm like, oh gosh, I got it. I have mastered the care of a fiddle leaf tree. So this made me very, very happy. Have I encountered pests? Yes, once. Uh, this one had some mealybugs. Um, I don't know. So anyhow, what I did is I sprayed it with neem oil that I mix a little bit of neem oil with uh, Dr. Bonner soap that a lot of us people, plant parents are using. And I've sprayed it with that. Of course, I clean it with a Q-tip when I see a mealybug and remove it, you know, physically with alcohol. And um, it controlled it. I sprayed it a few times, removed the ones that I found. Of course, I think I caught it at the beginning. So it's been doing really good. Okay, another thing I wanted to talk about is watering. First, you know, I think fiddle leaves, my, my biggest tip is make sure that you wait 
until it's dry to water. Don't overwater, like a lot of plants. So I, this has been a great investment, $13, get one. I just feel like it takes away the guessing game, you know, from should I water or not. Many times I've thought, oh wow, I need to water a plant. I think it looks dry, but when I measure it, it's not, and I'm in shock. Um, different things can make your soil dry, take longer to dry, different times of the year, how light, how much the sun is hitting. Even in your own house, the sun comes in through the windows at different, <laughs> at different hours. It's a nice windy day. We don't want to hurt you, bye bye. So sometimes, you know, I notice that it dries faster than before, after a few months, you know, in, in the different seasons. So just get one of these. You would save a lot of um, guessing. So basically I wait, right? You see the red? That means dry. So when it measures dry, I water. If it doesn't measure dry, I do not water. If it measures moist, I do not water. Let's, let's measure it now. Let's measure this baby. Okay. So you see here, it's measuring three. Yep, I would water it at this point. Okay, and when did and I let water did last? I want to say a week and a half, maybe. Okay, so I water it. Um, this one, let's check it out here. Ooh, see, moist, a six. No, I would not water. Let's see this one here. Okay, it's still in the green. Moist, no. Even though it's four, it's getting close to the dry. No, I'm going to wait um, until it gets to a three, two, two. Then I do it. How do I water it? Is I usually just take him out of here where I have him at. Doesn't weigh much right now. So you can see the price. Ooh, ooh, nice root. And this is that I already repotted it. Phew, nice. So I take it to my actually bathtub. And I just get the, um, I have a hose that sprays the water there in my shower. So I kind of, sometimes I try to wash it down and then, you know, spray it down with water because I want to kind of wash off if there was any little bugs trying to make its home. I wash it off and then it gives you the opportunity to dry them off with a cloth. Um, I usually use one that's very soft and sometimes I, I add a little few drops of coconut oil with some water and then I wipe them down and it's been doing very good. And then I spray the neem oil, the mixture once in a while, I don't know, once a month. I try to spray it once every month and a half. I've sprayed it down just as a preventative. So I've done that also. So that's how I water it. And that's the lighting I give. Am I missing anything? If you have any questions, let me know. And if you have any tips, let me know. But, um, you know, everybody has to learn their own plant. And I've been learning. And so far, I think we are in a happy place. So I'm happy. Uh, now, today I wanted, I noticed this one is getting kind of root bound. Well, let me show you. You see that? It's getting very root bound. And it's just a lot of little, st a lot of little trees. So that's why I was thinking should I wait and repot it until the spring? It's an option. But if here where I live in the eastern coast of North Carolina, it's going to stay warm uh, closer to December. So I feel like I still, it's not going to hurt it if I repot it today. Um, so I'm going to try it. A lot of people recommend you don't do it late in the year, that you wait until the beginning of the year, uh, spring and summer growing seasons. I feel like I'm still okay. I'm honestly gonna try it. <laughs> and this late in the year, repotting it. My plan is today is to repot it into a terracotta pot. It's a little bigger, bigger than, um, you know, the two inches that's recommended up size. But this is what I had. So I'm thinking as long as I keep the mixture very airy, uh, very light, I don't think it should hurt it. Like we say, you know, a lot of times it's a learning game. Um, you start learning what plants like and dislike and sometimes you have to just try things. So, so far when we put it these, I was also a little nervous and it all went well. Um, so at this point, instead of leaving it stuck like that, I'm deciding to repot it. So I, here I have my fancy setup. Uh, I'm gonna repot. <laughs> just kidding, not fancy at all. 
Um, and this is what I plan to do today, okay? So I have a, a potting mix that I got from a nursery nearby, a planty nursery that I made some videos about. Uh, it is a very airy mix, but I still don't um, recommend just using the soil. Uh, this one already has perlite. Let's see what it has. This one what it has here. Okay, it says this product blend of 40 to 50 percent Canadian sphagnum peat moss, um, bark, vermis vermiculite, uh, perlite, lime, and a wetting agent. So that wetting agent kind of makes me feel like you know I want to make sure I put more stuff to kind of aerate the soil. So my plan is to do about 40 percent of this soil. That's it. And then we're gonna do we're gonna do some fair light. Oops. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. And whatever I have left over is just gonna stay here in this box for some other free pot. And now I'm gonna add some orchid bark. And I just get my products. Well at least the pearl light and this I'm buying it at Lowe's. nice and junky right okay let's try that I'm actually gonna take away a little bit of orchid well I don't think it needs that much how does that look guys okay that's a lot of perlite let's put some over here more potting soil or should this be good good okay is that enough soil oh and i'm going to use the soil also that it comes with already okay so let's check out how the roots are looking here so you just squeeze a needle come on Ooh. Ooh. oh baby i'm sorry Ooh. Okay, yeah, nice and tight. So what should I do? Should I loosen the soil a little bit? I don't think so. I think I'm going to leave it like that. There's mixed opinions on it. Some people say loosen the soil so the roots can find its way to the new soil. Other people say a root's going to find its way. So don't disturb it so it can be less trauma. I'm going to not disturb it. to order an Amazon one of those scooper things to plants um, because it would make life easier right? so I need to do it I need to bite the bullet and spend the seven dollars <laughs> not that bad I just haven't done it okay filling up the edges with soil and I think I need more soil a little bit there I wanna, you want to leave, you know, an inch, at least an inch, an inch and a half, so when you water it, the water can actually go in and not overflow. That looks pretty good to me. Oh no, that wasn't that hard. 
How does it look? Is she pretty? She's so pretty. So yeah, that was an easy repot. Saving this pot for another plant. Always recycle your pots. So yeah, it's starting to rain a little here. So I think I'll end my video and hopefully you enjoy. I'll keep on um, sharing with you guys any tips that I learned along the way and also any places where I can you can find good deals on plants. I like sharing, I like getting good deals. I like sharing a good deal, okay? So maybe we can learn together. Thank you for watching. So remember, if your heart beats fast for plants, this is the channel for you. My name is Deanna, and don't forget to subscribe and press the like button if you liked it, and that way more people can also enjoy these videos. Thank you. Bye.